guys. So this week I published a video with five, five new updates from Canva Create. This is a release for October 2025. And as if that wasn't enough, I've got six more updates for you. So stay tuned. All right, so I'm going to jump right into the good stuff. No holds barred this time. And if you haven't seen my other video where I show you the five latest updates for Canva, I'm going to link it in the pinned comment below. But let's get started. So I'm just going to jump into my favorite update that I have noticed so far. So I'm going to go over to the elements section and I'm going to place a graphic on my workspace. I'm going to place this apple on my workspace. And I don't think that this feature works on photos or images yet, but who knows, maybe they will update it at some point. Now I'm going to click on this element and I'm going to go to edit. And we're going to notice that there is a new section. It is called style match. And oh my Lord, I am just loving this. And it's got all of these different creative ways to update your graphics. Um, there are handmade options. There are trendy options. There are realistic options. And these are just totally amazing. I am going to use the etching option just to show you the power of this style match capability. So I'm going to click that and we're going to go ahead and use it. It'll take a few minutes. And once it's done, we will see the result of an etching style graphic. And there it is right here. So let's go back and take a look at our original. This was our original apple and this is our etched apple right here. I'm going to take a copy of this and place it right here. But let's go back for a minute back to edit and back to style match. And let's just admire all of these different options because there is doodle, there is low fi there is pixel art, and there's gold. There's just so many different options here that I want to try right away. I feel like a kid in a candy store. Okay. So that is update number one that I've noticed, or actually six, if we continue counting from my last video. The next update that we're going to notice is that there is a new button next to the copy style function. So if I click my updated Apple and I go to copy style, we're now going to have two separate options. One is going to be copy art style and the other one is going to be copy basic style. And how do these work? Well, I've been playing around with it for a little bit and I think I have it figured out. So the copy art style copies the style from the style match to a different object. Now I've got another apple, so the results are going to be exactly the same. So when I copy the style on this apple, it should look exactly like this one. Now, obviously you're going to apply the style to a different object, but I'm just using this apple as an example. Now I'm going to go to this apple right here. I'm going to take a copy and I'll put this second apple over here. I'm going to take this apple right here and I'm going to apply a simple drop shadow to this apple. I'm going to go back to the copy style. I'm going to choose basic style and I'm going to apply to this apple right here. So we can see that all it's applied is that shadow. So just to uh, clarify the difference. Copy art style is only for the style match. And then the copy basic style would be for any other effects, shadows, filters that you are applying 
that you want to copy to another object. Okay, so that is number two. For number three, we're going to go over to text and we're going to add some text to our workspace. So here it is right here. Now, when we're adding text to our workspace, new is this Ask Canva. And what does this do? Well, when we click it, we get um, a couple of different options. We can rewrite text. We can turn the text into an image and we can get improvements to our design. That's what suggest improvements mean. So I'm going to let's click in here and let's write something. So all right, today is Wednesday, the middle of the week. And let's go back to ask Canva and let's ask it to rewrite the text to see what it does. Okay, so here are the different examples it's or suggestions it's giving me. Happy Wednesday, the week's midpoint. It's Wednesday, halfway there. And Wednesday today, right in the middle of the week. So, and if we click one, it will change our text. And it actually stores it as a comment. So anyone who has access to your design is able to see these changes. If we go back to ask Canva, it'll turn your text into an image and it will suggest improvements for your design. So these are things that you can try out. Also, right in here, if you are tagging someone, let's, let's say, for example, you are tagging um, another person. I'm going to use me as an example. You can um, assign a, the task to someone or you can just leave a comment saying, please review design and it will still be stored uh, in that comment to be accessed later. All you have to do is click on the view comment and it'll open it up at its location or in the right panel. And when you click on the comment, you'll see all the different notes. So that is three, Ask Canva. I'm going to add another page and I'm going to place some text here. And in this text, I will say, good morning. My name is Amy with an exclamation mark. Now, Something else that I have noticed is not, you know, I'm going to be honest. I don't know whether this is new or not, but when we click on magic, right at the bottom here, we're going to notice that it says generate AI voice. I'm going to click that and my left panel is going to open up. And what this does is it generates a uh, voice over uh, reading your text. And there are four different options of voices. There's Carol, there's Lisa, there's Ralph, and there's Richard. And you can see that it's taken my text and put it right into the this box here for the AI candidate to read for us. So let's try this and see how it sounds. I'll just click the play button. Good morning. My name is Amy. So that's what it sounds like. Um, I'm not sure if I really like that. I want to hear what you think. Uh, drop your feedback in the comments and let me know what you think about Carol's AI voice. Good morning. My name is Amy. That's Lisa. Good morning. My name is Amy. That's Ralph. Good morning. My, My name, name is Amy. Amy. And that is Richard. Now I want you to take a look because two of these are free options. Lisa and Ralph are free and Carol and Richard have the crown, meaning that they are Canva Pro options. Okay. Now, how do we get that voiceover on our actual workspace? If we click on the button 
at the bottom. That will generate the AI voice and it will place it right on our page. You can see it's right there in the blue there. Now, for some reason, we're not able to see the timeline in regular designs. And I'm not sure if that is a Canva glitch at the moment. Right now, for opening up a video design, a video template, we're able to see the timeline, but in a regular design or a design that has multi-media uh, options like Canva Sheets or uh, Facebook Posts, we're unable to see the timeline or the, dura the duration of the different elements. So again, I don't know if this is just a glitch or if this is some kind of uh, different direction that they are taking with media such as video and sound. So right now, the only way to actually hear this sound is if we go to preview and we preview that specific page. Good morning, my, my name, name is Amy. Amy. So that really sucks, but I'm sure they have a fix for this that's uh, going to be available soon. So we just need to be patient. So that is update number four. Let's talk about update number five, and that is this timer right down in the left corner. So if you are timing yourself on how long it's going to take you to create a design, we actually now have that option. We can click this and if I want to give myself uh, 10 minutes or maybe I wanted to set this at an hour and then see how long it takes me to create a design, we can do that and we can press the play button and it will count down how long it's taking us to create a design. And you can also set a sound to it. You can set the volume, you can re reset the timer and then press play again. Or you can just stop it by pressing the reset button. Okay, so that is update number five. For update number six, we're actually gonna go back out to the home page. And we're going to open up a video. So I'll just open up this video. It's a landscape video. And we're going to notice this brand new timeline where we're able to drag elements into the this timeline right here. We see the add audio and we see the time lapse as we're moving all the way across the duration or the timeline. Now, if I go to my elements section and I place a video on my workspace, so I'll click this video and I'll place it. I'm placing it on my page and it's automatically appearing on my timeline. And we're going to notice that next to the video is this big chunky plus sign. And if you click that big chunky plus line, it gives you the option to add other items like you can add an upload either that you've just recently uploaded or you can upload some files. You can add some stock videos so I can add another video if I wanted to and that will add another video or I can add a stock photo. There's a stock photo. Keeping in mind that when we're finished with our design and downloading it this is all going to be a video. So this is just going to be a stock photo. We can also just add a blank page where we can add some text if we wanted to just add some text. We're going to notice also that that text, we can see the timing of where that text is on our timeline. So if we didn't want the text to appear at the beginning, maybe we wanted that text to appear a halfway through, we can do that too, and it won't appear until the middle of the slide there. Now, just like 
previously, we can also add transitions between slides. And to do that, you just hover over with your cursor and until you notice that D with the marks on the side, click it, and that will open up the transitions panel where you can add a transition. So I'll just add a circle wipe. And I'll do the same for the next one. And this one as well. And for this one, you know, let's just change the color to a different color. Let's change it to pink just because. We still have the options available to us that we normally would have where we can edit our video, we can split, we have BG Remover, and if we're clicking on our video, there's also an option for Magic Background. Magic Background Remover is only available for photos, so you're only going to see it on a photo. So for videos, like this one here, what you're going to see are the uh, edit button, the split button, BG remover, well, where it will remove the background. You'll get to change the speed of the video. You'll get to crop the video, flip it, make it transparent or opaque. And of course, you'll get to navigate through position and layers. So that is it. That is the sixth update that I have seen in Canva. This is my second video explaining the updates that I have seen. What do you think? Which one of this set is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn more about Canva, I do have live classes. So if you're interested, let me know in the comments whether you want more information. All right, guys, for now, I'm going to say bye-bye. Until next time. Bye.